guys, we're Evan and Caitlin. And hopefully there are some really pretty after shots popping up on screen right now. Because today we are redoing our laundry room. So here it is. We walk through this room every day on our way to the shop. This is where we keep our camera stuff, strangely. It's got a big looming fridge we don't use. And of course, the litter box. The space is really not optimized, so time for a change. So here's the plan. We're getting a new front-loading washer and dryer from Lowe's. We wanted front-loading machines so we could put a countertop over them and gain a big usable horizontal surface. We're thinking oak plywood for the counter, maybe double stack so it looks real beefy. We went with these Samsung energy efficient front loaders because they had good reviews and this secret little door if you forget a sock. We're also getting rid of our fridge, which came with the house because it mainly houses beer that we have left over from our wedding, which was four years ago. Why is this beer still here? However, we do love having the extra freezer space, so we're gonna get a small chest freezer to replace it. Of course, we're making a counter to go over the freezer too, but it opens from the top, so we'll have to figure out some sort of hinged countertop thing to do. Last, the good old cat box. Yes, the place where our supervisor poops. We wanna hide it, so we're making a little built-in cubby between the freezer and the washer to tuck it away. We'll pop some open storage on top too. Okay, we have a lot to do. Let's go. Okay, so we got all the old stuff cleared out. We got our new machines in. We ran a test load in both of them to make sure that everything worked before we went and built a bunch of stuff around them. No but, leaks. <laughs> but we also didn't want to start building our pieces yet until they were in place, just in case we had to position things a little differently than we planned. So we measured everything. First piece that we're gonna build is this shelving unit right that's gonna be right here. And that's gonna set the height for the whole thing. Once we have this in place, then we're gonna add Add the back braces over here and then the countertop. So we're basically done. <laughs> shaped panel cut. <laughs> Bunch more to do. So just to give our box a little bit more rigidity and make assembling it easier, we are going to be routing rabbits along a few of the edges so that when the pieces fit together, they go like that. All of our main panels for this cubby unit are cut. We have all of our rabbits done. So now it's time. For a fit test. This okay. is the top. And that rabbit goes over here. Is this the back? That's the back. <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> we need to move the legs in a little bit. Does that look square? <laughs> Probably not square. Is this, this, this one too long? Push at the base. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> That's a nice looking. Look at the other end. Oh. Now we paint. All right, so we're about to paint the panels we just test fit together. But before we do, we wanna figure out how we're gonna do the edges. We could edge band it, but that seems like it might be a lot of work. Yeah. So we're gonna do a little bit of testing. Fill any holes we can see. Let that dry, paint it over. My guess is that with a freshly cut edge that is filled, the paint will fill in the gaps enough to make it look good. I think it's still gonna look like plywood. <laughs> So we're gonna use the same paint color we put on our pantry door a few weeks ago, which is Sherwin-Williams HGTV Home in the color Domino. I'm sure there's gonna be people like, why are you painting over that wood? <laughs> well, we have a lot of wood we're not painting over. That's all I can say. <laughs> I'm sorry. Good. Actually, 
I think it does kind of match. If we just go for it, that would be a lot less work. Yeah. I think I have a plan for how to glue this together. So that's the top piece. One side piece. Can you hand me the back? Yeah. You know what I just realized? We don't have glue on here. <laughs> Guess what? We just realized we forgot to do. Add the holes for the shelf hardware. It would have been easier to do before we assembled everything. And on my instructions we made, add shelf hardware to side panels before assemble. Oh, well, we can make it work. Yeah, I mean, you can reach in there, right? So you could do every single hole. We're gonna do like every other. We cut this little test piece to make sure that there's just enough room. One thing that we've noticed is this attracts dust. So I think we're gonna do some polycrylic over it to give it a little bit more gloss. Got it? Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, now we just screwed it into place. Is there enough space? Yeah, yeah, just like we planned. This is out too far. We, we, we need to unplug this so that we can go look, look. all the way other plug. <gasps> Shoot! Dang it. Can we just cut a hole in the back of this? So we did all of this planning. This big old plug. It seems like the least work would be just to cut out a hole from the back, because it's either that or take off the whole face. No, we'll just cut a hole. determine where the countertop is gonna be. So we're gonna bring this to the final height. By adding a spacer on top of it. And then we'll measure that, and then we'll determine where the sides are gonna go. Along the back wall and the side wall. Oh yeah, oh, oh yes. You need help? I got it. Go for it. So now it's time to cut the countertop. So we have a few options for the actual countertop. Which one's the prettiest? She's the prettiest. Look at that big divot in the wall. You see right here? <laughs> There's no way that we can get a straight piece flat. What about this? What about this? Alrighty, so if we put this. I'm not against that. We're gonna cut recesses in the trim for all of the cabling and pockets. That's awesome, it fits so perfect. So we have our top trim pieces ready to be glued up. We need to cut the bottom trim pieces that are gonna make this look like it's double thick. We didn't wanna actually stack two, so it's just gonna look like it from the outside edge. So we'll cut those and then one big glue up and put it all together. It's glue up time. We didn't have enough clamps to do every side at once, so we would clamp up one side, screw into it to act as a clamp, and then move the clamps to the next side. Oh, I hope 
hope it fits. It's too late now if it doesn't. Oh. Yeah. And this. Oh my gosh, look how nice that looks. This like, this looks like a thing. We couldn't be done at this point, actually, if we wanted to. This is a, a thing. Okay, so at this point, you guys have seen us cut enough big pieces of wood into smaller pieces of wood. So for our next section, the freezer section, we're just gonna. Hey, the main feature that we wanted to have for this space is to have a matching countertop over the freezer. And the reason that that's a challenge is because it's a top opening freezer. So the counter has to move with the door. So we made these side panels to make it match the main countertop and have a little bit of an overhang. And these side pieces will be held up by more side pieces. And we'll assemble those right now and get back to you. So we attached the countertop overhang pieces to the side panels using pocket holes. The reason we didn't make the countertop wider is because it would have hit the overhang on the taller countertop to the right, and if we scooted it far enough to the left to give it clearance, there would be a weird gap in between it and the cubby. For the freezer, we literally stuck these panels on with some heavy duty double sided tape because they couldn't actually be attached to the moving countertop. Honestly, at the beginning of this project, we didn't know that we could take this on. So hopefully watching us accomplish this inspires you guys to take on a project of your own. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye. This looks hilarious. I'm glad I can be of entertainment value. <laughs> <laughs>